will be referencing this slide a lot because these learning targets are a lot of different ones. So I'm going to go back and forth to check in with you guys to see if the learning targets are kind of bringing through with you guys, and we'll move on to the next one. So the first learning target is. Imagine an angle like this. If I spread the sides of the angle out, uh, if I make the angle bigger, doesn't that make the third side longer? Right? When you spread out an angle, it makes the side longer. So that's how it works. So in this triangle, which is the smallest angle, the 40, the 60, or the 80? 40. So this is the smallest angle. The smallest side is opposite. You guys will hear me use the word opposite. Opposite means across. So if you hear me use that terminology when I say the side opposite the smallest angle or opposite the largest angle or something like that, it means that it's a cross from. So if I was asking, if I see this picture and it says what is the smallest side, do I need to know what the actual numbers are? No. All you need to do is look at the angle. So this is the smallest angle, that's the smallest side. So I could ask you to organize them. So you could say this and this and this. And this. I could also use the sides to determine the measure of the angles. I don't need to know what the measure of the angles are specifically, but if I see that this side is the shortest side, that means that this is the small angle. Right? So it's really interesting that even if you don't know what the angle measures are, you can tell me which angle would be smallest based on the sides. So, so let's try these ones right here. So this one says, let's see. Size. There are two things you guys need to pay attention to with these questions. Are they asking for the size or the angles? And then are they asking you to go short to long or long to short? That's what is really easy to overlook in these questions to make sure you're paying attention. So I'm going from shortest to longest. That means I need to write the shortest side first. So which one of these sides is the shortest? How do I know? Yeah. Okay. the other way around. This time I have people. Again, it's really important to know what it is you're organizing. 
you'll notice that what they give you is not what they want you to put in order. Wouldn't it be like if you saw a question like this and you and they said put the size in order from smallest to the largest, wouldn't that be a dumb question? Like a three year old could do that, right? Just like three numbers. So whenever you have size, they're gonna ask you to organize these. Now what's different about this question? The size you're looking for. Now we're going from large to small. So again, you have to make sure you're reading carefully. So what was the largest angle? So that's our first learning target, being able to look at a triangle and organize the sides or angles in order from large to smallest or vice versa. Does everybody feel like they can do that? Yes? Okay. Now, this next one is related, but it's not going to ask you to order the sides from smallest to short or smallest to longest. It's just going to ask you to find the shortest, the ultimate shortest side here. What's different about this picture is that we have two triangles pushed together, okay? So you have uh, a little description here of how you're going to approach this. You're going to find the shortest side in each of the two triangles. So you're going to look at one triangle, find the shortest side, look at the other triangle, find that shortest side, and then they're going to go head to head. Those two sides are going to compete to figure out which one is the shortest, okay? Now, whenever you guys, you guys play sports, right, or watch sports, when you guys, like, you're trying to compete, you need to be on the same field, right? Like if you were on the football field and whatever that other field was, like lacrosse or soccer or whatever, could you play games if you're in different fields? You need to be in the same field, right? So notice that when you're doing this, you're comparing the two shortest sides, will end up being in the same triangle. And that should happen each time. Take a look, let's see what happens. But what I have to do to this picture before I get excited? That's the thing. Really quick, we hope this is right here again. 47 and 48, what would that third triangle be? Five, and then drop that in. If you don't have all three angles, you can't figure it out. You have to make sure you have all three angles. And then what about this one? It's hard out. But pay attention, it's all along the same thing. Okay. Uh, what would they think of Now I'm going to refer to this triangle as the triangle on the left. If you look at the triangle on the left over here, what is the shortest side that we're around? This one right here, right? That's across from 47, which is the small thing. This is the shortest side in this triangle. What is the shortest side is this triangle? You guys see how the shortest side is this triangle and the shortest side of this triangle, they both converge on this triangle right here. Okay, that's our playing field. This is where they're now going to play football or soccer. Right? This is the triangle that we're going to be competing within. So now what you need to do is look at each of the sides that I've just highlighted. And I do recommend you use a highlighter or your pencil to highlight those two sides. What are the two angle measures that are associated with those two sides? This side right here, YW. What angle is across from YW? Okay. And which angle is across from XY? All right. So we have 47 versus 48. Which one of those is smaller? Okay. So this guy wins. Yay, winner. Okay. So which side is across from the one? Which side? Which side is across from the other? So that was 
you're using the two triangles to bring everything together into one triangle, and then you're using the two angles right here to compete to see which one is the smallest. That's what you would do if you're working in two triangles. Okay, let's try the next one. What would I call this triangle on the left? What kind of triangle? The last least. So if I know that these two are equal to the last least, what do I know about these two angles right here? Are equal. You guys remember that's cool? Alright, so this is 20. What would you do with these angles? Okay. And then in this triangle, I have 17 and 54. I need to find the third angle. You need to know all three angles in each triangle before you keep going. Which one do you want to start at, left or the right? Right? Okay. In this triangle, what is the shortest side? Is that the cross from the 54? Which in the right hand triangle is the small thing. In the left hand triangle, what is the shortest side? Is that the cross from 20? Alright, so we're looking at them separately. Now, what do you guys notice? Those two sides that I got them separately, what do you notice about them? They're both in this triangle right here. That should always happen. You should converge to the same triangle. Now I'm competing. What two angles are competing? Which two angles am I using? So 54 versus 56. Which one of those is the smallest? Okay, so which side is associated with the 54 degree angle? So C is the all right, so you guys see how to do that when you have two triangles? Do each of them separately, and then you'll notice they kind of connect together in the same triangle, and then you compare these two. All right. So that was the first learning target. Now we're going to do the second learning target, which is determining if three lengths create a triangle. So there's this rule right here, and it's highlighted. You need to remember it's very important. It's called the triangle inequality theorem. There are three that the length of any two sides in a triangle, if you add those two together, they should be bigger than the third side by itself. So let's say I have a random triangle of like 5, 7, and 15. Okay, and then I have this. Okay? What this is saying is that if you take any two sides and you add those the first together, it should be bigger than this every single time. So isn't that true? Like 5 plus 7 plus 7. Is that bigger than 6? Okay, 7 plus 6. Is that bigger than 5? 5 plus 6. Is that bigger than 7? Okay, so that's why this would work for a triangle. But if you have some numbers that don't do that, that means that it wouldn't be a triangle in the first place. So that's what we're trying to figure out. We're using examples here, I have three different lengths. I'm trying to see if I could take those lengths, those sides, and make a triangle out of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the sum of the two smaller sides to the longest side. We're going to test this. If I can add the two shorter sides together, they have to be longer than the larger side. It's trying. That's how we're going to test it. So if you look at this one right here, which which are the two shortest sides? Okay, I'm going to add those together. What would that be? Okay, so what compared to 100 is 110 bigger or smaller? Okay, so if the sum is bigger than the third side, then it is a triangle. So would these make a triangle? Yes. That's all I have. Just trying to see if the two shortest sides added together is bigger than the third side. If it's bigger, then you're done. Example number two, which are the two shortest sides? Okay. What is one and six added together? What is seven compared to seven? Was the sum bigger than the individual size? So would this be a triangle? No. If you can kind of visualize this, visualize this in your head, if you have uh, a length that's one and six, and you try to hold them like this, they would fall like flat. Instead of creating a, a peak like this, they just equal seven, they would just fall flat and create a straight line. So that's why they don't create a triangle. Okay, what about this one? Which of the two shortest? 
then no, that, that question that they asked when they asked about if you're worried, like I told you, was I going to try to do something? All right, example number two. I have this question right here. I have 15 and I have 21. So I have this third side right here. I need to figure out what possible length I could have for that side. Wait, what you do? Way to express the ratio. 
Now, a ratio just in general only compares two things. We also have something called an extended ratio, where you guys are going to be comparing multiple objects. An extended ratio is a comparison. Well, you can't. That was the whole point of putting x in 
the expression, because then I can use the expression and the perimeter to find x and then use that to plug it in. So what would the length of this side be? Well, 1, 2, 3, 1. Once you get these numbers, how can you double check if you did it right? Is equal 63. If you add 12 and 24 and 27 together, should the perimeter still be 63? It will be. Yes. Your final answer would be B is greater than so all you have to do when you see a ratio or an extended ratio is stick an X on those numbers, put them into the picture that you have to draw for yourself, and then use that as a perimeter or any other rule that's relevant to the question to solve for X. Okay? And then the ratio of the angles of a triangle it is A to B to C is equal to 4 to 5 to 9. 5 angles So you have to think about this one. Okay, so I'm working with angles. We want to draw a triangle compared to right stuff in the angles. What other pieces of information do you have? So basically, you're saying that it's 4 degrees, 5 degrees, 9 degrees?
They're just going to describe a shape to you. They're going to give you a ratio. Draw the picture. Put X and put the numbers in the ratio. Put them into the picture. Know how to manipulate and write the equation from there. So is everybody okay with these three? For now. Okay. Last thing we're going to talk about are proportions. Okay. Proportion is an equation. Setting. Those two without changing anything else, and your um, proportion is equivalent. This one is probably the weirdest one. 
the hardest to catch. I'm sorry, you guys do have to memorize uh, this one right here. Those ones are a little bit easier to see and to work with. But this fourth one's really random. This fourth one says that in each ratio, you can take the denominator and add it to the numerator, but leave the denominator the same. Like what they did here was they took the four, they left the four here, but they added another four to the top to make it five. And for this one, they did the same thing. They added 12 to the top to make it 15, but left 12 to the bottom. If you were to check this in your calculator, 5 over 4 is 15 over 12 or the same number. So this is true and this is true. So that's why they came. That's all. So this one I know is like hard to see. But you have to make sure you're paying attention to that. Alright, so you guys have a little bit of space underneath in the margin. So I'm going to do a quick example for you guys. What did I write this way? One half equals two. I can write that in the bottom part again, a little bit of space under there. <coughs> Alright, I'm going to put a couple of different proportions on the screen. You guys are going to help me figure out which ones would be equivalent to this right here. Alright, so I'm going to number them, you guys can write them down too. That's my first one. Understand why number two would be equivalent. It's just the same thing, just partially cross multiplied. Or it is fully cross multiplied, not full. Alright, what about three? Would that be equivalent to the original? Why? Okay, so which one of our rules? This one? You guys see how it adds to the pattern? I've got the two added to the top and made it three over two. And then it's a 4 to the y, y plus 4 over 4. You guys see how that rule Okay, So 3 is the same. What about 4? Would 4 be equivalent to the original proportion? What did I do? I did the reciprocal second one. 
Does that make it equivalent? No. So what you have to do is keep your eyes peeled, be really careful, see what it is that I did, and then compare that to see if it matches both the goals over here, or if I cross multiplied, that would still be considered equivalent. All right. So let's check in with our learning targets. Everybody can order the sides and angles from small to longest or vice versa. Yes? Anybody still stuck on that? No? I can determine if three lengths or three numbers create a triangle. Everybody agrees they can do that? Okay. I can find the third side of a triangle given two sides. That's the one where it's a possible length for the inequalities. Everybody's okay with that? You can solve with ratios. Those three examples where you guys had to draw the picture. And then finally, being able to write or determine equivalent proportions. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. All, all, of, all of those five learning targets will be addressed on your homework, which again, you guys can find on Blackboard. It will be in the same place you guys would go to find the lesson for like the, where you guys were reading. It would be in that same area. It's just going to show up as homework. The name of it will be day one homework and stuff like that. You click in, you'll see the document. You can either print it out and keep it in your notebook, or you can just write the question and answer. Or not the question, sorry. Number the questions and write your work and answer in your notebook. Does that make sense? I will say that when I am grading your guys' homework, 